All right, bravs. I should not be starting another book when I've already got six or seven in progress, but such is the nature of the beast. Get as many out here as we can. I can. Libraries and Culture, Proceedings of Library History Seminar 6, March 19th to the 22nd, 1980, Austin, Texas. Texas? Texas, edited by Donald G. Davis, Jr. Forward. The addresses and papers that follow will document some of the intellectual challenge and delight that characterized Library History Seminar 6. Libraries and culture held in Austin, Texas on 19 to the 22nd of March, 1980. Their presentation to responsive audiences represented the culmination of nearly 18 months of planning and preparation. Their publication here will no doubt encourage wider reflection on the themes, issues, and finer points raised by the speakers. When the first such seminar convened 19 years before, November 2nd to the 4th, 1961 in Tallahassee, the 17 participants included the six speakers, succeeding conferences held in 65, 1968, 1971, and 1976 have grown in attendance and in sophistication. LHS 6 was the first such seminar under the sponsorship of the University of Texas at Austin, where the Journal of Library History has been edited and published since 1976. The Graduate School of Library Science and the Division of Continuing Ed Education shared the major responsibility. Supported by the American Library Association's Library History Roundtable and Beta Phi Mu International Library Science Honorary Society, both the National Organization and the Beta Eta Chapter in Austin. In the early stages of planning, the program committee comprised of the JLH Editorial Board and Arthur P. Young of the Library History Roundtable decided that in the contrast to recent seminars, LH, LHS of six would aim for the broadcast possible chronological and geographical scope as reflected in the breadth of topics, the most open competition and submitted proposals, and the widest possible appeal to a variety of persons interested in the history of collected graphic records. From the 109 prospectuses resulting from the call for papers, 31 were selected and divided into 13 sessions. The spectrum of top the spectrum of topics is unusual even for an interdisciplinary field. As a glance at the table of contents will reveal, the papers range from ancient burials of metal documents in stone boxes, their implications for library history, to Chinese libraries during and after the Cultural Revolution, and from the book collecting in Counter-Re-Reformation Counter Italy, the library of Gian Vincenzo Pinelli, 1535 to 1601, to Francis Newman, librarian and novelist, the varied backgrounds and perspectives of the speakers likewise contributed to general interest. Although prepared commentators initiated discussion in about half of the sessions, limitation of space has not allowed for printing their remarks here, despite the spice they added to the live meetings. The aim of the evening plenary, plenary sessions, addressed by Elspeth Rostow, David Davies of the Kinks, and Neil Harris, he's not of the Kinks, I don't think, was to place the historic role of libraries in a broad and general context that would complement the more focused papers presented during the day. The fact that more than 100 librarians, historians, bibliographers, library school faculty members, and students and generally interested persons attended the sessions seemed to support the optimism of the seminars planners since the seminar itself has received thorough news coverage in the library press, nothing descriptive need be added here. Summary accounts descriptive and evaluative appear in American libraries, May 1980, Library Journal 1, June 1980, JLH, Summer 1980, and Texas Libraries, Fall 1980. Although the speakers and the editor have made every effort to provide accurate copy for these proceedings, the editor and the sponsoring entities do not presume responsibility for the entire con contents. The variety of subjects treated by authors with dissimilar academic preparation and divergent points of view ensured and continues to ensure provocative and even controversial responses from others. 
The cause of library history will be well served if readers will consider these papers critically, engage in further research, prepare papers of their own, or at least forward their thoughtful comments for inclusion in the communications section of JLH. As John Cole of the Center for the Book at the Library of Congress expressed it in his concluding remarks, Concrete steps have been taken toward expanding horizons, the horizons of library history, including the attempt of the speakers to view their subjects broadly, to pay attention to context, social, cultural, and intellectual. He perceptively suggested that along with other major conferences, 1980 appears to have been a critical year in establishing a new level of interest in the history and role of books in libraries. This introduction would be more incomplete than it is were not thanks rendered to those who gave so freely of their time and energy to guarantee the success of LHS V16. The local arrangements helpers, though indispensable, are too numerous to list individually. However, two persons deserve special mention with regard to this compilation. Janet Fisher of the University of Texas Press gave very encouragement in publication of these proceedings, and Betsy Van Tyne, JLH editor assistant, gave up her summer to help copy edit them. Vox Audita, Audita Perit, Litera Scripta Manet, butchered but such as the ways. Fall 1980, Donald G. Davis, Jr. Seminar Coordinator. Um, I will stop there as I prefer to separate the sections and chapters. All right. Until next time. Goodbye.